Hello there friends and welcome to Not Another Sci-Fi Channel. My name is Valley and this is 6 Things Gone Horribly Wrong in Star Trek Discovery Season 2 Finale Part 2. Now where were we? Ah yes, number 4. Why are the Klingons obsessed with ramming things? Ok, so this is technically not a mistake. It's more of a curiosity and I fear it is something indicative of a far darker path the writers are taking. Very subtly, they are stealing elements from other franchises and incorporating them into the Star Trek genre. Now, I know it was never seen on screen, except that one time, and everybody lost their minds because it undid 60 years of plot points and basically showed that who has more kamikaze pilots can win a war. I am of course talking about this gorgeous visual effect which had people rioting in the streets because of its stupidity and blatant disregard for canon. But it is a bit more subtle than that. I think the theft of the ramming idea comes from Emperor Palpatine's flagship, the Eclipse. A dreadnought we have not seen on screen, but big Star Wars fans that know the extended universe know this ship very well. The Eclipse was equipped with the firepower of an entire planet making it a powerful foe in standard ship-to-ship -ship combat. But the vessel's heavy hull plating and strong shields made it possible to use the ship as a ramming device against virtually anything, destroying enemies through sheer impact force. According to Admiral Motti, the Eclipse was intended in early development to be the next generation star dreadnought for the purpose of solidifying imperial rule within the next century and of course, a potent psychological weapon, given its size, incredibly powerful main laser, and its ability to ram and split other capital ships in two. Again, we are going into that lazy writing thing, only this time, it's a bit more Grand Theft Starship if you ask me. But it is still a gorgeous visual effect, and a very dramatic way for the Klingon fleet to enter the battlefield. Ok, so maybe the subtle way the ramming thing is brought into the Star Trek genre is not that bad. But my next point is really a bit disgusting. And that brings us to number 5, R2-D2's cousin crosses over. Oh no, they didn't. Oh yes, they fucking did. They actually stole R2's cousin. And on top of that, they had the balls to paint him in the same fucking colors. Wow. Wow. Come on guys, that's a real eggplant move. I will be honest here, the first thing that popped in my head when I was watching the movie was, cool, so many R2s. Wait, what? What the fuck am I watching? Then, an old TNG flashback came to mind. And here we can see that this is really stupid, the ship magically repairing itself. I know, I know, it can be explained away with Borg nanotechnology. But here is where I see a big problem with this kind of shortcutting. A, for the casual viewer, it makes no sense. B, for the hardcore fans, yes, we know about how advanced the Borg and their nanotechnology is. But still, seeing it used like this, without a short clever backstory about how this magic works and things, it does look kind of dumb. And C, for the viewers that fall in this category, ah fuck them, they don't understand, they don't need to understand. Right, going back to these R2 ripoffs, of course Starfleet has the technology to build these little engineers and of course it makes perfect sense to use them like this for ship repairs. But if I show my 85 year old grandmother these two pictures, she knows that the one on the left is Star Wars and the one on the right is Star Trek. And then I show her these two pictures, ah who am I kidding, she has no fucking clue either way. And she's dead. But the point is, not cool guys, Roddenberry would be spinning in his grave right now, only he doesn't have a grave. True story, his ashes are in orbit at this very moment. Right. Moving on. Number 6. Drones. Really? Yes, dear friends, we have something worse than the theft of R2 in this episode. I consider this to be pointless, useless and downright stupid. 
Now, usually at this point in my videos, I have a dramatic reveal, a shocking piece of information, but not this time. This time, it's just disappointment. If we think about it for a minute, of course it makes perfect sense to have small attack drones, be it if they are converted from work bees, repair craft, purposely built drones, whatever. Analyzing this situation from a tactical point of view and postulating future conflicts in space, it all makes sense. To a certain point anyway. Bear with me on this for a minute. It is ridiculously stupid from a practical military and scientific point of view that future space battles will be fought in line of sight using old ship of the line tactics and maneuvers. But that's what makes these movies entertaining for us, the audience. If we see a dot on the screen as the enemy ship and from two light years away we fire our projectile, then wait 10 minutes for said projectile to hit and destroy the enemy and see the dot disappear from the screen, that would be no fun. And that is why we have these quirky space battles that tend to evoke memories from days long gone, from line of sight battles, old style dogfights and broadside exchanges from capital ships. Why do we need to destroy the most important aspects of these science fiction universes we love so much? All for the sake of some visual effects that are awesome I will admit but at the same time they're ruining the storyline. Where were the drones in the Klingon war? The Battle of the Binaries. Lazy writing? Overzealous writing? Bad writing? You choose. And I think that brings our episode to an end. Let us not be too sad slash mad slash disappointed. There are a lot of things the show did very well and gives us hope for the future. And I think my next episode will be on a positive note. Oh, say something like 8 cool things about Star Trek Discovery. Till then, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps out. And if you've enjoyed this video, please share it with others. Hit it.